Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Brandwurst Podcast. I'm your host, Arab, along with my co-host, Edwin, otherwise known as Quick. And today, we have on an online mastermind, to say the least, a person who's helped start up Cookies and Kicks, Von Dutch, Unhappy Clothing, and many other successful e-commerce businesses, known on the streets as the Beverly Hills Bandit, Oh, no way, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Luca Nets, welcome to the podcast. Thank you for having me. Listen, uh, normally our, our realm is, whether it be influencers or people in esports, YouTubers, etc. But recently we've tried to shift into a little bit of the online marketing geniuses. We've had somebody uh, named Ben Gonzalez, who's an OnlyFans, an ethical OnlyFans pimp. Um, and now you, it's just interesting for everybody listening to hear the side of, because these worlds are interconnected, esports influencers, whether it be OG usernames or Instagram followers, all of it's, all of it is interconnected. It's cool to see the people that are behind the scenes. Like you, you don't, you don't have a big following on Twitter. Um, but, nope. but what you do have is a name that everybody knows if you're into e-commerce. So it, it, it's cool to see people don't realize that a lot of the people that make things move, you don't know who they are. And, you know, in, in that case, this is one of those scenarios to the public eye. You're a much smaller person than they think you are. But if they knew your achievements, yeah. like it's pretty crazy. Anyways, if you want to tell the podcast you know, about yourself or go into anything that I missed. Yeah, I know. So long story short, uh, you know, 17 years old, you know, figuring out ways to make money, realizing that school was not for me. Uh, you know, our financial situation growing up was not a good one. So for me, it was just like, this is redundant. I need to go make money. Uh, got into the workforce for about two, two and a half years. And then I found drop shipping. And then once I started getting into the drop shipping space, I thought there was a huge market in regards to influencers not being able to monetize their following. I was really shocked as I got into, you know, the internet world that all these people with, you know, hundreds of thousands or millions of followers, I thought they were rich and making millions of dollars. And subsequently, as I became more educated in the space, I realized uh, they weren't. And so I started to come in and try to monetize their brands uh, through e-commerce that was very successful uh, and that was kind of my first step up and then from there I kind of diversified my portfolio into you know learning Facebook ads Google ads and just kind of you know printing money spending one dollar making five spending five making ten and then just kind of rinse and repeating the process and then obviously going from there diversifying into crypto SaaS businesses uh, you know stock market this type of thing and uh, ever since then it's been a pretty steady ride and now I have uh, like I was telling you just before the podcast working on gamer gear and so i think it's just a coincidence that you know we're on the phone or on this podcast now talking about it figuring the gaming space is something i'm going to shift into i really believe esports is the future i think uh where we are with that in terms of anybody from any background any shape any size any ethnicity can get on the sticks any age and you know rock out and have just as interesting of a of an experience as any football or basketball game and i'm a huge you know basketball and soccer fan and so these type of things i think we're really going into that you know ready player one world if you're familiar with that movie i think that is the future i think we're going to be more digitalized as time goes past and i think this is really the future so i think it's a blessing that we're on the phone or on the podcast today and i think there's a lot of cool things we can talk about i gotta agree with you there bro and on we are on our way to ready player one but i think we made a pit stop at the movie gamer if you've ever seen that before i have seen i have seen gamer i think there's I a lot of I think it's a while before we get to Ready Player One, but I think uh, for sure. The movie Gamer, it's like a VR game and everyone has colored hair and everyone is, you know, like super sexual and, and you know, pink, blue hair, Edwin. And, you know, you can uh, figure out what the rest of it is, but <laughs> it's like, it you can, like my kind of film. It's like, it's like you can be a VR character of like whatever you imagine. And so everyone in there is like a, like a punk who's like gay and, you know, pink hair or whatever, but... So, um, Luca, so you gave us the, the brief rundown. You started off in e-commerce. Like, what were your first big achievements that you were proud of? You were like, all right, I did this. Yeah, so, I mean, 
you know, for me, like I, I was really frugal when I was like, like, I didn't really understand every, anything that I was doing. And so like the achievements that I was hitting, they were dope. I think probably the day where I was like, okay, I have like a million dollars in assets, like between my portfolio and like my bank account. And I was probably about 19 when that happened. And so I was like, from at that point, I was like, okay, this is awesome. Now, unfortunately that was, it was kind of a pro and a con. It was a pro because I was like, okay, this is dope. Like you've kind of cr- cross the threshold of like, okay, I have a million dollars, you know, I'm a millionaire, quote unquote, right? And that was like dope because that was an accomplishment of mine, but it also wasn't because it wasn't as fulfilling as I thought it would be. And so I spent my whole life, like we were like, we were bouncing house to house. Like we didn't have a stable place growing up. And I always thought in my mind, like, dude, if I just get a million dollars, like it's going to change everything. I'm going to be happy. I'm going to like get everything that I want in life. And then once I had made the million dollars it was cool but i'd realized that i wasn't it wasn't as impactful as i thought it would be and it was one of those things where i was like okay i hit this goal post but now the goal post kept moving right so i was like okay you're you're you have a million dollars so now what's the next step what's the next achievement and unfortunately that actually kind of put me in a downward spiral where i started you know i started getting really depressed and so i've like i have a real battle with mental or at the time i had a real battle with my mental health and it was something where just like i just couldn't find happiness and i was just making money making like things I wouldn't imagine, right? So I'm somebody who worked for $10, $15 an hour. Like I know that I used to work a job and in a year I would make 25 grand, right? After taxes. And like now I'm making 25 grand in a day and it's like, dude, where's the fulfillment? And so recently, probably eight, nine months ago, I found God. And that was like really like the huge shift for me because like I found purpose when in the beginning I really didn't. It's crazy. Uh, yeah, go ahead. I, I was gonna say like you know i i always talk to everybody about are this, those my like, discord you... messages or can you hear them too i can hear them too i think okay, they're okay, his. okay that's fine uh, did i mute those yeah if you can <laughs> don't worry i thought they were yeah, mine okay. i just want to make sure my end wasn't broken Continue, no, 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 you're good um so what i would always relate this to uh, to arab you ever you ever play nazi zombies you ever play like zombies on call of duty uh, I, I've, I'll take. I'll bet anybody on a game of zombies here, boy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Well, you know when you get to the point in zombies when you like triple pack a punch your gun, you have every single upgrade and everything, and they're just racking up money for no reason. Like when you when yeah. you reach a, a certain level of success, that has to be what it feels like. You know what I'm saying? And um, yeah. And finding purpose is very important because you know early on in life, man, you know, I was one of those people where I was like, oh, all I want is money. I don't care what I have to do. Like I'll do whatever just to you know have like a bunch of money. But like, I, as you get older, bro, you realize that, dude, money does not bring happiness at all, at all. It, ha- happiness is like a, it is a state of mind and it's a state of purpose. You know what I'm saying? And, and money definitely propels that purpose, but it doesn't create it. You know what I'm saying? Agreed. And I think it's kind of a, it's a conundrum. I think it's like a double-edged sword because I also don't think that like, I think you have to, you know, have some sort of financial stability to come to that epiphany. I think prior, like a lot of people will say, well, money doesn't mean much to me, but will still dedicate eight to 10 hours of their day working a job they don't like uh, and that they're miserable at. And so then I would argue the contrary. I would say money is everything to you because you're spending a majority of your waking day working for money. Right. And so like, I really believe that people need to find like some sort of like some sort of source of income that makes them happy and fulfills them before they can take that step and say, okay, like now I know money isn't like the the source of where I'm going to get my fulfillment. But I also think not having like Kanye said a bar, he was like, um, I forget what it was, but it was like having money is at, having money isn't everything not having it is right like yeah yeah when you don't have it like you can't tell me that if you're like working like like a miserable job where you think you're miserable like and and you can't just be like yo money isn't anything to me because like you're dedicating so much of your time to generate that revenue that like i would argue that it would that it is but i mean once you you know, breach that plateau and you break through, you definitely will come to a realization where it's like, shit, like money isn't everything. Like there's so much more to life than that. You know, you know what I think is like a a really underrated thing that people don't really understand, especially people from our generation is that the, a lot of the reason that people that are older than us or, you know, the working class, they don't know that they can do something that like most of the reason they do like nine to five shit, like they, they commit most of their lives to is because they don't know that they can do something else. We know this because we know how to use the the internet productively and efficiently. 
like older people don't so they don't see it as you know i think that there's like a real there's a learning curve and i think that people after a certain age are afraid to learn you know what i'm saying they're just like well this is just how life is you know i completely agree and you know that's where my next like perspective with people is like finding your purpose is so important. Like I think that everybody that's probably listening to this that has an internet connection is better off than like most of the world who's like, you know, from the people in like middle Africa or, you know, the Middle East and places like Syria and stuff like that. We have a duty as a people, as 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 fortunate people in this like God given opportunity to the fact that we have like internet and like we're not getting bombed on that we have to like find some sort of purpose to make hey, this man, world. You make- Making fun of my people, dog. No, no, no. I'm I'm fucking with you, bro. No, his his people literally. No, they literally got bombed though. Like recently. (laughs) No, we did. It was actually six months ago. Six months. Six months ago, yesterday. Oh, that's right. You're in. You're. You're in Lebanon. So yeah, Lebanon definitely definitely has some rocket. No, we literally got bombed on. (laughs) (laughs) Somebody got like a like a twenty kill streak or some shit. I was Um, a little bit higher than that. But uh, but yeah, dude. Listen. So so I have a question for you. You, you know, you've 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 uh, maneuvered your way through life. You've gone from being it sounds like not very affluent to affluent, right? And I mean, fuck, dude. Being an, a millionaire by age nineteen is is impressive by any standards. Like you know, like when I was nineteen. Yeah, I was man. Don't tra- give him too much credit. It was an asset. <laughs> <You know, laughs> but, but, but uh, but so so you know, it sounds like you had some 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 mental hardships so do you want to want to take take us through that like to where to where you found like take us through the mental hardships that led you to find religion and and yeah so 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 like you know what happened was is like i 19 so i'm 22 now so 19 i'd realized that money wasn't the solution so i'd spent like you know year and a half, two years in the ether, like doing drugs, trying to find love in women and always trying to be dependent on somebody else for my happiness. What happened was, is maybe about 12 to 13 months ago, I thought I got really sick. And in that moment of like being of like fragility, I I thought to myself, I was like, you know, every time in life when something goes wrong for me, I like always, I was never a religious person growing up and nor did I really believe in God per se. Like I was always a man of science. Like I believed in the big bang. I believed in science. I believed in the facts. Right. But whenever things got wrong, there was like this innate instinct of mine to like always resort to prayer. Right. Like I was a bad kid growing up. I went to juvenile hall. Like I was like in and out of like, like I, I I was just like, was not in a good place. And like, whenever things were like really south for me, I would pray to God. And like, coincidentally enough, as corny as this may sound, but like my prayers were always answered. And in this moment, 13 months ago, where I, you know, thought I got really sick, uh, I resorted back to prayer and I realized I was like, like, I found something there, like where like, I realized, okay, no money's gonna save me here. Like the only thing that's gonna save me is like my, my, my my journey to the like the next life like that's what i need to work on and doing my due diligence there i thought to myself like wow like i have such a love for god that i'm now gonna like go down the rabbit hole and like okay if you're a lover of god and you believe in god like what's your religion so i read the quran i read the torah and i read the bible and holy the quran, shit uh, yeah, dude, I'm telling you, like, I thought I was going to die, dude. So I'm over here like, bro, fuck money, fuck everything. Which like, one's the I'm, right yeah. one? Let me get into heaven, yeah. bro. <laughs> <laughs> uh, exactly, bro. Uh, that's funny. Uh, this one's going to get me to heaven, bro. You know what I mean? <laughs> but, you know, subsequently, I was more looking at it like a like a guideline. Like, I, I wanted to hear what other, you know, people had to say over, you know, the thousands of years. And the Quran's the one that res- resonated with me the most. So Islam is where I kind of moved towards. And and that is just like the, the stuff in the Quran just like so aligned with my beliefs before I read it that, you know, when I read the Torah, I love the Torah. And I read it when I read the Bible, I love the Bible. But like something about the Quran just resonated with me differently. Yeah, but if and you so read I, it in English, you're going to hell. Is that actually true? Well, I don't know if it's like that. I don't know if it's literally like that, but you're supposed to read it in Arabic. Yeah. It's you're, like, you're uh, a joke like i gotta i gotta get ready for oh, this pivot, oh, we're, you know we're I mean? very sarcastic on here by the way me especially sometimes i'll go on days where it's like it doesn't stop but um no but actually yeah that's how it is that's why you'll notice most muslims know how to read arabic but they don't know how to write it or understand it because they they learn how to read it so that they can i'm not muslim by the way i'm catholic 
but yep. that's what that's what they'll do. They'll end up. Yeah, and and that, that that's interesting. I actually didn't know He's that. He's like, fuck. Yeah, I just saved yeah. you, bro. He's like, fuck. Let me go. Let me go Catholic. <laughs> I don't want to fucking yeah. learn Arabic. I don't got time for this shit, bro. You're like <laughs> a religious swinger, dude. Holy shit. No, but you know, I I like I'm in a conundrum right now, actually. Maybe you guys can shed some light. You right? want to have a baconator? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm 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 actually in the place where like I I resonate like before I'm a man of religion, like I'm a man of God. So before I'm a man of Islam, like I'm right. a man of God. If that makes sense, right? right. Like, I'm, like, and and that's something that I've changed. And like recently, like. I think it's really important that when you renounce yourself to a religion that you take it with the utmost respect and care. And so something that I'm like looking for opinions on is really my stance on me being a Muslim. And I'll kind of explain that to you. And so like my, when I say that, I mean like, I don't go, I don't pray to Mecca five times a day. Right. And sometimes like I'll eat a burger and it isn't halal. Right. And like, I don't want to disrespect Muslim people by claiming to be a Muslim and then not taking it with the utmost like seriousness. And so like, I'll give you a more, a more American example. Like everybody in America is a Christian. Right. And then like, I'll meet like real devout Christians who've spent their whole life being Christians and though like they're not having sex until they're married. And I feel like it's, and then you'll have like 90% of America. Okay. So you have sex. That's what you're saying. And then, and then you're just fucking everything. You know what I mean? Going around doing your whole nine, not following the book. But I feel like that's kind of disrespectful to the people who really take that and so like, I don't think it book. is. I think it's I, I each have, their own. I, I have a pretty decent. Uh, so I went to a Lutheran school for for eight nine years. Right? Yeah, like Edwin, you, first grade. You say that on every podcast. You brag about first it all grade, the time. First grade to eighth grade, right? I went to Lutheran school. I was fucking. I know the Bible backwards and forwards and that. And oh, in Arabic. Is, you know it in Arabic too. <laughs> um, they didn't write it in Arabic, bro. They don't want those people. Well, that's just so backwards. <laughs> <laughs> oh, true. All right. Well, hey, you know, two jokes in one. Anyways, um. Dude, the the one thing that I've come to learn, at least the what I've, you know, in my head, is that I know that there's something out there. I know that there is a creator, there is a, a divine being, whatever. I don't think that he likes what we do. I don't think that he likes that we we give him a name, we give him a story, this and that. All that stuff's man made. And it, realistically, a lot of the things that people follow in religions were also man made. Like a lot of the rules and shit. Like they were like they were uh manufactured and, and kind of like put into the into the religion in order to benefit you know the church or whatever but my point is if you believe in a monotheistic religion a lot of them have a lot of parallels to each other if you've read the books and you know that so i think that we're all talking about the same person and i don't think that he necessarily gives a shit what we do nor do i think he like I think that he created the wh whoever, whatever created the universe. I think they created the universe. And I think we're a byproduct of his creation of the universe. But I think that because humans have such a self-awareness and an ego, we like to believe that everything's about us. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. I think that that's where religion really came from. So to, sur to summarize everything, my point is, I don't think that you should get really caught up in the minutia more so than you should get caught up with your relationship with whoever whatever that is you know what i'm saying however it's presented to you in this book in that book in this book just know that they're there is my you know and and i love your perspective there edwin because that's why i said like as of you know a couple months ago i was like i'm a man of islam but now today i'll tell you i'm a man of god right like i'm a man of god first because you're right i've read three both the, i've read all i mean there's more books but i've read i've met them read the main three and i've read them twice now and there's so many similarities it's just like little semantics they're different mm -hmm. right like one jesus prophet one muhammad is the prophet like there's like you know what i mean like and that to me is like conjecture like and it causes so many arguments with people when it's like if you because i'm catholic um i grew up right. in a catholic school i mean to brag in front of edwin here um mm -hmm. but like i'm not super like strict you know, like I want to raise my kids in the church or whatever, just because I think it's a good community. But like, I don't go to church. I haven't been to church in like a year. Um, but I do believe in it. He's he's also only bragging because his his pastor just loved on him a little bit more than ours. Yeah, typically. We had so. a good relationship. I don't I don't want to talk about it though. Um. Anyways, I I think as long as like, like you said, you're a man of God. Like as long as you're being good, everyone has like an innate 
the nature in them to be good i feel like right like it's not i don't think it's an innate it's it's not an innate like want to be bad as long as you're a good person and i mean you believe in that shit like it's it doesn't really matter bro like do you know do you, you know do you like either... you're you're participating in the in the good of all of them like you don't have to pick one like it's there's no way you get up there to the to the gates of heaven and then you know he looks at you and then he's like Oh, you picked the wrong book, you my friend. <laughs> you picked the wrong book. <laughs> do, do, do either of you are either of you familiar with Pascal's Wager? With who? Pascal's Wager. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Really? You know it? Me? Yes. Yeah. Oh fuck! I went to a Catholic oh, oh, school, bro. Oh, that's so cool. No, I mean Pascal's Wager isn't necessarily like a religious thing. It's like a. It's no, like they a logical teach you thing. it in religion, though. They teach you that shit. But yeah. basically, it's saying like you know, if if the situation is there is a God, and your two options are believe in God or don't believe in God, then you should probably believe in God. And if there isn't a God, I agree. Right? If there isn't a God and there is no afterlife, but you believe in God, well then shit, you spent your life being a good person, so it doesn't really matter. You know what I'm saying? That's Pascal's wager, basically. Dude, I love that you said that. And like, that's, that's really where I'm coming to. Cause like, for me, like I'll sit in a temple and like, I'll feel so close to God and then I'll go to a mosque and I'll feel so close to God. And then I'll go to a church and I'll feel so close to God. And like I'll wear a rosary and I'll, you know what I mean? <laughs> and I'll feel so close to God. Like for me, it's like, as you know, all the religions don't preach evil, they preach good. So like, for me, if like, if you're a Christian, I love you. If you're a Catholic, I love you. If you're, you know, I, I love all people, right? Like, regardless, as long as like, you live life the right way. And at the end of the day, like, you know, you and I, and, and all of us on this, on this podcast, like, we're gonna die one day, right? Like, that's the inevitable, like, that's our common denominator, like, whether we like to, like, accept it or not. And, like, if you think about that, then our purpose in life can't be about ourselves, because we're both, or all three of us are walking dead people, right? So, like, what's the purpose in life? Like, my derivative from that, like, statement is, like, we're here to make the world a better place. And as long as, like, you're you know, emitting positivity and you're making the world a better place. Like that's all that matters to me, you know, and you're doing good by people. The rest is conjecture, you know, like that to me is really the underlying foundation that I look for in people and like objectives in people's lives. And then the rest is just, you know, up in the air. Listen, I love the, the fact that this all came out of the, um, off the note that money doesn't bring you happiness because the person who recommended us to get you on this podcast is like uh he's been following your shit for a long time and he's one of the only people in our small team of like eight or seven or eight people that we have that still disagrees with us every time we tell him that money doesn't bring you happiness because we're avid supporters of that concept uh you know granted we haven't ever like been dirt poor luckily you know our, our parents right. gave us good lives but like i i personally have seen money tear apart families you know, like, it's brought a lot of, uh, what do they call it, um, turmoil in between my extended family, etc. You know, and it's like, that's, that's a big reason why I've adapted that, that idea. Like, never once have I, going into this industry, been like, okay, you know, my goal is this amount of money this month. That, like, I do push to, to push my business, etc., but my goal is always to influence the largest amount of people and it's never been to look at okay uh what's my revenue this month it's more like how are my analytics like am i you know pushing my message across to as many people as possible so it it, it definitely is like money doesn't bring you happiness so so when you when you notice that and you got pushed into this religious shift my question is what was like the big turning point right because i have i mean i have a cousin who also was atheist and then he pushed into this big religious shift and now he's super super religious he's like a yoga master um stuff like that super spiritual but there was like a big shift you know he said he saw like he saw people like angels and stuff eh, and he had like a in real life experience what was your uh, there had to be a moment where you're like all right fuck this like i'm picking up the three books and i'm finding out what it is you know it's a panic attack wasn't it yeah. So, so for me, it, it was interesting because 2020, I think I, I endured three miracles, right? So first I tried to hang myself, right? And so I bought my house in Los Angeles and in my house in Los Angeles, it's like a new home, right? It's like a modern, like new place. And like, it's not like, 
I basically did like this, because I'm tall as shit. You wouldn't know it, but I'm like six five, six six. Like, and so it's pretty hard for somebody like myself to hang myself. So I did like this pulley system. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, hey man, oh, hey man, you 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 got the height to to play in the NBA. I don't necessarily blame you, man. That's fucked up. Dude, like, I don't have man. a high enough roof, bro. Like I don't have a ceiling high enough. <laughs> dude, I should have been in the league. Man, so I, I tried. Like, dude, active. I can't imagine. Like, like <laughs> he goes, he goes. I had a pulley system, dude. Like, shut the fuck up. Dude. No, I can't on. imagine, bro. He goes to do. He's like. Like, he puts his, I mean, I know it's like, whatever, we're going to joke about it. Anyways, he, like, yeah, goes yeah. to do it, and yeah. he, he's like, my feet are touching the floor, bro. Seriously, like, right now, this is when you. <laughs> he's like, I got these high oh, nice ceilings for a reason. Dude, and I'm, I, you would have, so you would have never told me in, like, a million years that I would have, like, ever killed, like, tried to kill myself. Right. But, like, it was such a rock bottom moment, and, like, mm -hmm. 10 seconds of, like, parabolically like terrible things happened at once that i was just like okay dude this has got to end so for like two hours i had a complete lapse of judgment so like i'm looking at my door frame I'm like dude i'm just gonna kill myself like shit's about to get really bad really quick i set up this pulley system from did you write a note no 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 wow no, no. But I have a video okay. i have a 10 minute video on my phone that one day i'll release to the public just good. for like good to really see does some it, crazy shit does it bring you to a dark place or does it make you realize like how, like how thankful you are for what you got now oh immense gratitude and that was the, really the thing that made me like that got me there is like lack of gratitude like even if i had nothing right now like i'm in america like i'm like i said i'm not getting bombed on like just think perspective right like at that moment Dude. in time i was really ungrateful and I lack perspective, you know, and like, that's what will make you do those type of things. You know, like, no matter how bad you think your life is, I can bet you tens of millions of dollars that there's somebody's life who's worse, a lot worse. And like, they're pushing through it, you know. And so for me, it was just a matter of like, it was just like ultimate lack of perspective, ultimate lack of gratitude. Life is coming down. I think I'm going to die. I really fucked up, not only for myself, but for the people around me. Shit's going to screw. I hit this pulley system. I'm, I've pulled it off. It works. I'm hanging myself. And then my door hinges on my brand new house just kind of pop off. They don't rip off. Like I don't rip the drywall off, but is this, is this like almost every screw in the door hinge like is comes undone and I just kind of pop off and the whole door just slams on the floor. Yeah, you're a big bitch, bro. You're like six, six fucking trying to hang yourself with a tiny ass door frame, dude. Shut up. <laughs> hey, listen, dude. So I think what you said is very important. And I have two things to say about that. One. So my parents they're from a third world country i'm first generation here and i never lose sight of the fact that like i shouldn't be. like if it wasn't for my dad if it wasn't for my mom working their asses off and like the prime of their life where they could have just been enjoying it to get me and my sisters here i wouldn't have this opportunity to do the things i do so that's why you know i finished college i did everything they wanted me to do now i'm trying to succeed as much as i can every day i never lose sight of that and perspective is very important but i will say Comparing your life to other people's lives and saying that that they have it worse isn't necessarily what a lot of people that are depressed or suicidal go through. A lot of times they have a chemical imbalance that doesn't even them register that. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like sometimes, sometimes their brain just lacks certain chemicals that result in these emotions. And personally, for me, my knowledge of that, I am very aware of that. And sometimes when I'm manic and when I'm like being like when I feel like mentally fucked up, I'm like, okay there is something chemically wrong in my brain right now and I just need to ride this out and it'll be fine eventually. Right. You know what I'm saying? Um, I love that. Yeah, so that, that that's the only note I have on that because, you know, I you can, because, dude, you know, you can say the inverse too. Like, because if you could have a great life, but if you compare yourself to somebody who's doing better, you're always going to be fucking bummed. You know what I'm saying? Right. So that's which I Which I which i think we're leading to another piece of great advice which is don't compare your life to anybody so you're right you caught me in, in a fallacy right because i shouldn't have said that just don't compare your life to anybody because i used to be so, like i used to like you know have a hundred thousand dollar day and i used to be like oh well this kid is like doing better than me and then i wouldn't think that what i did was an accomplishment and like in retrospect there's a fucking six-year-old on youtube making 30 million dollars a year oh so my god <laughs> no way <laughs> fucking ryan's <laughs> toys reviews pushed you to kill yourself right that's <laughs> wild <laughs> i mean dude when you put it in perspective it's just like you, know, you got to be content with you sure. because like a lot sure. of people for example looked up to me right little did they know that i was in such mental shambles that like you just can't like 
think that, oh, he's doing something awesome. Mm -hmm. Like you just don't know what's happening on the back end. I can show you the front end and the front end can look awesome. But like the back end and like the code that's back here is like all fucked up, dude. You know what I mean? Maybe not now, but it was then. And so just like my advice to people is just really find love in yourself, find passion and pride in what you do and how you do it. And the rest will fall into place. At the end of the day, if you find your purpose, that's all you need and everything will come from there. Like you mentioned something really interesting um to call you a rab or you like yeah, what, yeah no, call your... me a rab call me a rab yeah, okay. yeah you said something really interesting it's like yo you care about how many you know impressions you got that week or that month and you're caring more about the product than the result of the product and what happens is is like your income will come but at the end of the day you're focused on delivering a exactly dope product right which is people versus then i'm just doing this to make money where like some people look at impressions like shit how much money did i make Bro, for me, it's Dude. always been about being happy. Edwin told me actually a great, he's, got, he's always got great analogies or whatever, but he told me one of his uh, family members came home one day and she was like, all right, I got this promotion. Um, and he was like, okay, like, she was like super happy. Came home, told him about the promotion. He's like, okay, like what's next? He's like, I'm going to work for the next promotion. And it's, it was like, so I forgot what the full story was, but it was basically like everyone is working their ass off like in the thing they hate or doing something they don't really enjoy to try to get to that result which is you know the the promotion so they're working for it's, five it's, they're working for five years or whatever to get that promotion and now they're happy for one minute or, or you know a day or whatever like a kid with a new toy and then by by then it's over and then now they're working on the product again like it's just my thing is like figure out a product that you enjoy and let the promotion yes, be like all right so time to start so the next important. product you Bro. know Dude, it's just like you work for years doing something you don't like to then do what you don't like at a higher level for longer to work to do some more things you don't like. Like, it's just so fucked. And, bro. Like, and I don't compare like my numbers to other people's. I like to look at my numbers and be like, all right, did I beat my last month's numbers? No, if I didn't. All right, let's figure out what I did wrong. You know, it could just be a rough month. But what's the percent different? Whatever. But it's like it's never. OK, what did you get? am i better no, am i worse no, it's always it. like okay yeah, nice yeah. i've i threw last month's out of the roof like keep up what hey, you're doing let, let me let me give let me give a quick vouch to to arab on the whole like not caring about money thing when we started brand risk and i think it was probably when we the second go around because we had we had another homie that did it with us and then he had like an epiphany and just wanted to go live real life and then we took like a couple months break and then we came back me and arab just started doing it and then we started taking it real seriously and i, I have a text that i screenshotted and it was, uh, he texts me, he goes, <clears throat> he goes, Edwin, I'm like, what? He goes, I need you to promise me something. I'm like, oh God, what is this? And he goes, I need you to promise me that we will never, ever do anything on brand risk or for brand risk for money. He's like, we will never change what we do for money. He's like, we'll never change how we deliver things for money. And I was like, oh my God, dude, signed, signed and delivered. So to this right. day, bro, like, that's just it, bro. We, we, we do this because we do this how we want to do it when we want to do it and under no su supervision of anyone else and that's that's i think that's how you can live life in in the best way you know what i'm saying you guys got it figured out for sure and that was you your first okay uh, like i mean like you said we're going well we're going through your miracles so first one the first one try to hang myself second one was this life like this thing that was supposed to kill me didn't kill me right and like by some miracle of god i came out unscathed which i don't feel comfortable talking about it now but i'll talk about it one day but like if i you understood the story you'd be like wait how are you not dead and so like i'm like oh shit, dude i'm a fucking martyr i just fucking ran through it and the second one was a situation where the i third probably one. A third one yeah third one i probably should have fucking overdosed it was a long story i'm not gonna go on that uh but like i fucking went blue in the face cold in the mouth like you know what i mean like had to go to the fucking emergency room and you bring me and after that third one you were like okay after that third one i'm like dude like I'm, i've done everything to like get myself off this earth and i'm still riding like i'm still here and so it's like dude I'm dude dude i have i have a theory i have a theory and, and believe it or not like whatever but this is just my theory i believe that everyone in life has a purpose and i believe that your purpose can be as small and as insignificant as bumping into somebody and slightly changing their route and i really really believe that you are not allowed to die until you've fulfilled that purpose and and arab can tell you 
I on oh a my monthly God. basis. I almost witnessed him die in front of my eyes. I on a, on a monthly basis have my run-ins with with near death shit. Like me, and me, and my friends. We I do was like, talking to his girlfriend while we both almost witnessed him die, and I was asking her if she's ever worried that he's gonna die. And as soon, dude, in front of our eyes, they they do crazy shit. I don't know if you know on the Juke Squad, and basically they have a bunch of trampolines that they built up to like, like trampoline to trampoline to trampoline to trampoline. The one that I was on like was like thirty feet. Yeah, I was like. It was like 30 feet, feet and they jump into their pool like they're having a party like a Halloween party and and they're doing backflips into this small ass pool that they have bro like and he jumps off and he does a gainer off this pool in the middle of a party at fucking midnight and dude if you see the video he he lands and his hand so the the cement is right here the edge of the pool he goes in the water and his hand is like this and all of a sudden, because he hit the water, like, first of all, his head was this close to the cement. This close to the cement. Normally, you land in right. the middle of a pool. His head was this close to the cement. Like, he missed it by this much. And his fucking hand, as soon as he lands in the water, it vacuums him down. And it pulls it like this. So, in the video, you see his hand like this, flat. Like, perpendicular to the cement. And all of a sudden, it gets sucked in the water. Like, he would have fucking snapped his collarbone and his shoulder and shit. And if he gets have, out. If have, dude, if I would have landed on my feet, dude, like that would have fucking sucked. I remember being mid flip, seeing <laughs> the ground and saying to myself, this is a lot closer than I remember. And, uh, and Damn. fucking sticking it. My problem was I didn't look before I flipped. Cause I'm, dude, I've flipped in that pool so many fucking times, dude. I just like, I'm like, whatever. He gets out, bro. And he's like, to everybody, they were like going like, Ooh. he gets out and everyone's staring at him like this. Whoa. Like, and he, what would you be like? You're I, like get out, I get out of the water. I'm like, yeah. And I look around and no one's stoked for me. I'm like, and then I look over at like my friend's dad that like owns the house. And he just looks at me and he's like the type of dude, dude, like my friend's dad will tell you to fucking do the most fucked up shit, dude, for, for, for a video. Like he'll, he'll like, but when that dude tells you that you almost died, I take it serious. I look over at him and he goes, dude, liability in this house well, not, even, not, <laughs> even, not even about that bro i'm saying like he witnessed me almost die and like th that like we do crazy shit all the time but like i guess i was really i hear about this on a monthly basis from somebody somebody brings it up at least once a month that i almost died but anyways uh yeah Br brushes that's brushes juke death. squad fun. what sounds like you guys have some fun i need to tap into this juke squad that you guys got going i gotta come down there and fucking oh my get god juke. Dude, please please make sure you can you can you don't bite off more than you can chew my friend <laughs> like, we do some fucked up shit dude <laughs> uh but uh anyways yeah man I, I going back to what you were saying about like you know you finding your purpose and 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 whatnot um so i i talk about this sometimes and i i think that mental health is very important and i i try to make a note of mentioning it as often as i can because whenever i do i get messages on twitter people are like oh dude like I thought I was just fucked up and then they're like, no, I heard you have the exact same experience and it helped me out. And that means a lot, you know, it kind of validates what we do. So I had a, I had like, a, yeah. I had the first panic attack I ever had, like middle of last year, beginning of last year. And it changed my entire perspective on everything, bro. I don't know. Like it just, it just, it, it was like an ego death. You know what I'm saying? I was like, dude, if I die right now, what have I done? Right. Like who, how are they going to remember me? And then that kind of trickled into like me having the idea of like, dude, if I'm ever on my deathbed and I prioritize money over the relationships that I, that, that I've built over my life or, or my own personal happiness, dude, health is wealth. And as soon as it's taken from you, bro, you don't, you realize that, you know what I'm saying? Like taking your health for yeah. granted is the most fucked up thing you can do, dude. It really is. Cause you, life could be on autopilot. You could be making hundreds of thousands of dollars a day, but as soon as your body's like, Nope, I'm done working. You're, you're fucked. There's nothing you can do. You know what I'm saying? I completely agree. And it's just, again, added perspective to that. Like you're thinking your problems, something the next day. And, and what people don't understand, there's nothing stopping anybody from waking up with a brain tumor tomorrow. Like there's nothing like you can be raw vegan. You can be like the super health coach. Like you can do anything, but like some things you just can't reprogram. Like you might just wake up tomorrow and have leukemia. And like, if that's the case, what is your legacy? Like to me, life is legacy. Like what have you done to impact the world? And like, that like no one's astray from it like no one's not vulnerable to it and i think it's a really interesting perspective like a lot of people will say like live every day like it's your last and it's one of the most like known sayings and it just goes over everyone's nobody does head, it but, like, really nobody does it yeah 
Nobody does it. Now that and I'm thinking like, about dude, it, you could wake up with. Five like, I feel like if I if I died today, I'd be happy with what my legacy is so far. That, I'm not done. Like, don't get me wrong. Like, I'm not. That doesn't mean like I'm where I want to be. Like, I'm I'm pretty happy with it. Like, you know, if I got a brain tumor, like I'm thinking like, you know. I, oh I, my god! Do you know how much clout you'd get if you had a brain tumor? Oh my Holy <laughs> shit, dude! You blow the fuck up. I blow the fuck up already. Wait. Yeah. Uh, you're, yeah. <laughs> um. Okay. So those miracles affected you know the way you think then what was it literally or just right after you're like all right fuck this like um like how how, yeah. how did that happen how does that i'm just I'm, I'm looking at the inevitables here like i'm looking like okay this happened and now like i'm dodging all these bullets like i've i'm like and i just like okay like god's the way i want to go and so i adjust my whole lifestyle like when i'm when i was sick like i went why like what did like, you I juggle just, what did you juggle before you decided god so when I found God, like it was, so I, I'd gotten sick first. So, right. right. So like I got sick. So and then after I, then those I'm three reading, miracles, you got sick. No, no, no. Bef so before, so look, okay. I get sick. I look into God. I try to kill myself almost OD. I'm like, okay, I'm already believing in God from when the moment I get sick. And then from there, I'm just like, okay, after the three miracles, I'm like, dude, this is like undeniable. Like, can't deny this shit. Like, For sure. <laughs> it's, you yeah, haven't served your believe. purpose yet, yeah. Yeah, and then now I'm good. And so then the next step from there is subsequently, as weird as that sounds, like from that moment to today, like I stopped caring as much as my fine about my financial life and caring more about like creating products that help people or, you know, creating services and things that benefit humans and like us as a species. And ever since I made that pivot, I haven't hit, made more money than I have in the last 10 months. Like these last 10 months have been my best 10 months financially. And they've been the first 10 months that I'm focusing on product and impact versus generating revenue. And it's really interesting perspective and like interesting how that worked out. Can I, can I tell you a parable that you remind me of? Yeah. So, so there was always this this one. I remember because I used to go to church all the time with my parents growing up, and there was this one. Let me pause. That, Edwin's been uh -huh. on his Jesus shit the past three podcasts. <laughs> no, dude. Listen, Every I, single I, person I, Edwin has <laughs> brought back the body. Edwin's going through something similar. Edwin. Nah, nah. Listen, are you listen, too tall, like, Edwin? Dude, you know what? Please you know tell crazy? me you're too tall. No, nah, I'm too short. That's the uh, issue. Fuck. Uh, <laughs> but listen, no, dude. Listen, it's so crazy because when I went to when I dude look. I want everyone to know that I'm not like I'm not like really religious. I'm really not, dude. I haven't been to, I haven't been to church in a long time. I just I just have a great relationship with whatever's up there, right? I I just I personally think I do, and and that's why like even like the Bible shit. I just know it so well because I fucking went to school. And it's funny because when I was going to school there, they told us they're like we're only teaching you this shit so that when you're older, you can apply it to your life and it, you know like parables like uh, like scenarios that you've heard about but whatever. Anyways. There's this one that always stuck with me, which was, and I thought it was kind of fucked up. It was, it was like a man was, was living his life and, and shit was going well for him. And so he didn't really pray to God that much because shit was going well. So shit started going bad for him and he starts praying to God. And then he prays to God and God answers his prayer and things are fine. And then things are great and he continues to pray and things are great and things get better. And then he kind of stops praying. He stops kind of thinking about God or thanking him or whatever. And then shit goes bad again. And he's like, fuck, dude. So he starts praying more. And then eventually he has a conversation with God. He's like, why is it that shit is just go so up and down, up and down, up and down? And he goes, well, when shit's good, you don't fucking hit me up. He's like, and I love you. I want to hear from you. So I'm going to make shit bad so you, you're close to me. So that's, right. so that's kind of how he operates in the sense of like, dude, I, to this day. Yo, God from the hood, when, huh? Dude, from this day. No, God, he's a vengeful <laughs> God. That's what they say. That, that's what they say. He's a, he's a vengeful God. He's, he's, he's slow to anger and, and love. Anyways, but to this day, bro, when, when I feel like my life is going too well, when everything's going so smoothly and so good, I'm like, I'm like, wait a mother, wait a second. I'm like, yo, thank you. You know what I'm saying? Whoever's up there, thank you. I have not forgotten. And that's it. And then I go about my day. And same thing, bro. I feel like when you... Whether it's like just remembering to be grateful and saying that thank you to him, to whoever it is you fucking pray for. I think gratitude is really it. I think gratitude and having that perspective is really what makes your life good. I don't think that money or success or any of those things make it good. I think your gratitude in relation to the things you have is what makes life worth living. You know what I'm saying?
I completely agree. Couldn't have said and it that's better. the parable you remind me of, bro, because it sounds like you were away from, from, you know, whatever you found, and then you found it, and now it seems like you have a purpose. And I have a question. Are you going to go into philanthropy? Yeah, so, like, my thing is, is, like, I'm a very, like, I believe in making an impact, right? But I know that the impact that I want to make, like, unfortunately, the way that, like, our society is structured, whether I like it or not, and I personally don't, I wish it wasn't like this, but I'm not going to try and reinvent the game, at least. If you're going to reinvent the game, you have to be at a certain stature. But unfortunately, people with power and people who can implement real change tend to only take advice or tend to listen to the people that they respect. And unfortunately, in our society, respect is kind of garnered by net worth now obviously there's exceptions there but typically if i want to go make a huge legislation push or if i want to you know do something impactful like create schools in africa or, or do something along those lines you know it te typically takes a connection and a breach and for me like my focus here is like look i have all these dreams i have all these solutions on how i can fix the ghettos and how i can you know gentrify or you know bring huge economies to you know underdeveloped countries and so i have these strategies but for me i think objective number one is to create a business that can allow me to get in any room that i want so i think that i've like really built something and i'm in an interesting niche where it's like i know how to do something at a very high level and i know that with the right idea and the right structure i can do what I do and make billions of dollars or hundreds of millions of dollars doing it just the way this e-commerce business is structured it's just right now it's just like a huge uptrend into this market and so for me objective number one is okay make your hundreds of millions of dollars make a business that will get you in the rooms with anybody that you want to and then focus and dedicate your life to making a change and so to me I think there's three verticals that are really uh really that I'm really passionate about I'm a huge advocate for helping the voiceless right and to me those are people like or those are animals right like I think the whole animal shift is a huge one I think what we do to those animals across the board is just horrendous are you vegan I, think, uh, I was vegan so it's also kind of contradictory you miss me chicken just, too much that's not that I miss chicken <laughs> it's more it, it, but but it's a huge thing because I'm an avid believer that if I, I have to be who I say I am, right? And so for me, veganism is something that I have to convert to eventually because I just love animals way too much. I just don't feel like I need to eat them, right? Though I understand the the I understand the argument of the the proteins and the, the but I also understand the other side of the argument. I just well. I don't think it's a problem to do to like eat them and then still advocate for like them being treated well. You know, like I, I get, I, think, I get I people it's... will call you a hypocrite and whatever. Like I just, Dude, I don't the, see the, the problem with world... pushing a good message. Like, I mean, the, the only, demand the is only... gonna be there either way. The only I don't know. world we'll ever, well, the only world we'll ever live in that has both sides be happy is the world where a hamburger costs you thirty five dollars because it was like hand raised and like not slaughtered. I was just about to say that. I think there's a huge issue in the fact that I can get a 99 cent burger, but a $5 salad. Like that's, that doesn't make sense to me, right? So like I can get a 99 cent burger, but like my, my salad's like nine bucks. Like there's there's a discrepancy there, right? Especially when you're talking about like taking a, a life and killing it. Like I understand that. And I think it should be a delicacy. And I don't think it's something that somebody should eat breakfast, yeah, lunch, and yeah. dinner. And it should something to just force feed yourself in abundance. Uh, and that's just my perspective there. Am I going to change the whole thing? No, but you guys also understand environmentally, right? Like 51% of all carbon generated is from agriculture, right? So like, there's like a lot of problems that need to be fixed here in the increase in population, right? As humans on planet earth, like it's just not sustainable to have meat and dairy and, and like just animal products as a sustainable solution to scale. Like it's just not scalable. It's like, eventually it's going to fucking come breaking down. A virus is going to get fucking, uh, is going to get harvested out of that. Something bad is going to happen, as we saw with H1N1, but obviously there's going to be a lot worse. There's just not a sustainable solution, nor do I think it's the most effective solution. After you eat a Beyond Burger, and it's just as good as any burger. Oh, my God. Like an Impossible oh my Burger God, is so good. probably better than a burger. An Impossible They're Burger. Good because, dude, you don't, you don't feel like shit after, too. You don't. You, 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 you don't yeah. Dude, I'm telling you, look, I think that the way it's going to go is definitely the Beyond Burger route, or you see like how they're like growing meat like artificially. Like that, uh, like what the yeah. fuck? Like what? Are, hey, just don't tell me you grew it in the lab and I might eat it. You know what I'm saying? Like fuck it, right? Like if it if it's oh, the yeah. same shit, and like, who cares?
completely agree. And like, there'll be like the anti GMOers, like at the end of the day, like, I think like the route to sustainability and like efficiency is not in, it's just such an old, like, it's such an old prehistoric way of consumption. Like we're evolving in every vertical of like Except every market, like that first, you were so prehistoric there still. And so I think, you know, getting into because i'm a huge stock and crypto guy like i think one of the great industries edwin for, just got you know, a boner that, <laughs> over the next over the next 20 years is going to be the people you know who my next reinvent. question is gonna be yeah go hey what's my next question um did you invest in amc and doge and uh what's your next question GameStop? oh dude uh, was that your next that question was it. that was it oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Did you fuck dude, with I'm that? Be real. So I have like a little. Hey, do you, dude. Hey, yeah, let, I did. I have a little... Let me ask you this. You got diamond hands or what? Your hands made out of diamonds or what? Dude, diamond hands here. But I'm I'm not a fool either. So I'm like a I'm like a I'm like a diamond hand. But like I got one hand that's a diamond hand, and then like one hand that's a human hand, bro. I'm sorry. Like he's I'm not, not an idiot. He's, you know? he's like... not hodling, bro. He's not hodling. <laughs> hey, man. Hey, that's fucked up, brother. Apes strong together, man. You fucked me. All right. <laughs> Now, I'll hodl a Bitcoin, right? Like, so that's something that I'll never sell, right? But like, I won't hodl like an AMC. So for me, like, I, I have like a little uh, stock chat that I have. And so I called AMC at two bucks purely because I thought it bottomed out and I love the dividend. So like, I'm like, I'm like a, a technical trader too as well. Bro, I'm going so, <laughs> to add you to ours, bro, please. We, we got to come to mine. We'll okay, chat. Fuck yeah, dude. I, I'm on that shit, bro. I'm stoked. I fucking made like a bunch of money on a random one today. That's what he just told me. But anyways. Dude, I, I day trade. I fucking swing trade all the time. Bro, listen, I've been there. I've been there. I don't touch that shit anymore. I just I go long term. Know, I, I want you to know how much fucking money I've lost this week, bro. I want you to know. It's I want you to know. It's, it's several <laughs> thousands, bro. Several how much I made I this week. <laughs> because Twitter is at an all-time high. 52 weeks, baby. Hey, man, listen. I, I, I bought GameStop at like fucking... Dude, I don't even want to talk about it. But I'm fucking... You know how Edwin justifies his losses? Huh. And let me tell you, it's exactly yeah. what he thinks. He goes, fuck, dude. I just lost five grand. I'm going to tweet about it and I'll get impressions out of it. And maybe that five grand will <laughs> turn so into right. something. Because so right. so <laughs> right. this motherfucker has tweeted about his losses, I think, maybe like five times in the past three days. I've tweeted about my losses more than more than ever I've ever tweeted about my games, bro, because it's so funny. I'm like a masochist, bro. I fucking like the pain, dude, or something. I, I'm like in, on some weird kink shit. Dude, I'm telling you, I, I that 2017 Bitcoin crash, I'm like so immune to any pain. Like you can same, do anything. To same, me bro. Market, but I can't. Bro, doesn't phase me, bro. bro same, because that was like my first time big investing. I put in like five grand. It's all the money I had at the time. I didn't have like any expenses. Uh, I lived at home. I put in five grand, right? And that was like everything I had at the time. And I turned it into fucking eight, 16 or 16 to 18 k in that during the fucking rise. Where like Litecoin hit 400, etc. Uh, and I was like, dude, Litecoin. I'm a fucking trader. And that was at the time I had like three screens <laughs> and it was always graphs. It was fucking every coin that I had, graphs, etc. All the Twitter people, fucking Charlie Light, Satoshi Light, um, mm -hmm. all those people. And then my fucking, my shit popped, right? And I went, I bought a Surface. I was like, dude, when I travel, I'll still be able to keep up, you know, like shit like that. Next week, that shit crashes down to like 2k, and I was like, What's the return policy what? on the surface? <laughs> shit like that, bro. I was like, And then I left it in there until I came back positive. So I, I never took a loss like after like a hey, year later, but you know, hey, I'm claiming I'm claiming I helped I, I helped Arab make, make five grand like two weeks ago. Yeah, he did. That was like a week ago. Oh, was it? Yeah, I called we called Blackberry the night before. Uh, cause we're like, all right, this is going to be next. Ooh. Once they get out of GameStop, this will be next. So I bought a shit ton of Blackberry. I put right. in like fucking, I put in like 16 K. No, I put in 16 K in a oh, Blackberry. Really? Jesus. Oh, you got five racks out of it. Yeah, That's I got five racks. I, I put in 16 K in a Blackberry and I was like, yeah, it'll pop tomorrow. Uh, I was like, let me take a gamble. <laughs> like I know it hasn't gone up yet, so it's not going to go down. And then Edwin calls me like four hours. <laughs> <laughs> Edwin calls me four hours in the day. He goes, dude, I was like, what? He goes, do you see what's happening right now? I was like, is it good? He's like, bro. I was like, how much is it up? He's like, check. I can't tell you. Check. And I was like, okay. Like, you, can you just tell me? He's like, no. I'm like, I'm live, bro. He's like, just check. So I pull up Robin Hood. I was like, oh shit, Edwin. I'm up 5K. He's like, yeah. I was like, I'm selling. 
I'm not getting greedy. And I was like, should I get greedy? Should I get greedy? And he's like, bro, I'm not your financial advisor. I was like, I'm not getting greedy. I'm getting out of this. I got out. That shit dropped right after, bro. <laughs> Dude, literally, literally like fucking two hours after he got out, it, it fucking plummeted. It's the greed will get you because you're like, fuck, I made five. I can make no, 10. I can make no, 20. That's why, can bro. The, the, the Bitcoin crash taught me, bro. The Bitcoin crash taught me, especially if I'm in something to day trade. Just take your fucking percentage, you know? You can't... You can never go wrong with taking profits, you know what I mean? Dude, right. People don't get like, that, bro. F FOMO, people are... Dude, I, but see, that's like a real... That's like a real... Uh, a broke man syndrome. Like, I don't know, man. You got, like, the, the money that you put in... When I put in money into my investment account, I am I am consciously saying to myself, this money is gone forever. You know what I'm saying? It's it's right. literally it's literally gambling. So <laughs> you you have to not be afraid to lose. Like when GameStop went from fucking three hundred dollars to to forty eight yesterday, forty eight dollars yesterday, and I bought at like I was wow. like mid to high, dude. Like I I looked at it, I was like, great, another screenshot for Twitter, and I just fucking put my phone away. You know what I'm saying? Like it, <laughs> it, it, you you can't get hurt by that shit. You really can't. Eight thousand nah. impressions. I'm cool with that. That was worth the loss. <laughs> <laughs> So you're into stocks. Did you participate no, I, in the gambling? So I, I participated in AMC, but I was, I was doing it before the gambling. So GameStop, I was like, dude, I actually shorted it at like 50 bucks, but I only spent you a couple grand. I was like, this thing's fine. Yeah, I'm sorry, dude. But I saw AMC and I thought AMC was actually a good business because I don't think movie theaters are done. I think movie theaters will always be there as like a social tool. I don't think COVID or anything will really affect that in the long term. And AMC also pays a really great dividend and dividends basically when the stock pays you to own it, right? And so for me, it's like if I get into AMC at two bucks and it goes to four and it's paying me a 20% dividend on four bucks, I'm like printing cash. It's like how Warren Buffett makes so much money. And so for me, AMC was a pure long-term play that I was like, okay, it's bottomed out. It also had a short squeeze. So I thought it might've done what it did, but I ended up putting like a hundred thousand dollars at like two bucks. And I fucking went all the way. I sold at $16. No way. <laughs> oh my God. Holy fuck. I'm not half a million dollars richer. I'm a 380 richer at that. At Bro, that listen. Oh my God. I, I know. I know why the frame broke now because your cock is so fucking massive, dude. That's why it weighed you down. This man goes, I, I threw in a, a light 100K. I look over, I'm like, damn, I put fucking $20 in that bitch. Damn, fuck. Bro, that's the, that's the thing too. When I see my brothers like Robin Hood, I'm like, what the fuck? Like, this is so much. I feel like even when I have money, like, that's going to be crazy just putting in that much. Uh, um, yeah, I'm slowly, I'm slowly adding in dude, there. Man, you know, it's pretty funny too. So like I have so much bread in Robin Hood. So like, I, I like, dude, this is hilarious. You're gonna laugh your ass off at this. When the whole sh Robin Hood schmangle went down, I called my lawyer. I was like, we're gonna sue these motherfuckers. <laughs> I posted on Instagram. Two days later, I'm like, wait, I'm like, I'm like, I'm, I'm, I'm like co-signing the demise of Robin Hood and I have like 2 million on margin in Robin Hood. <laughs> like, I can't do this. I post on Twitter. I'm like, I forget. I love Robin Hood. <laughs> Everybody, Robin Hood, it's okay. You know what I mean? Because I'm thinking, dude, if fucking Robin Hood loses liquidity and goes down, bro, my two million margin is really gonna bite me in so, the butt. So everyone so that like, doesn't like, understand it. what margin is is listening. Margin is basically like so on Robin Hood, when you put in like X amount of money, they'll give you a percentage. So like let's say you put in 20 grand, they'll give you a percentage that you can trade with their money. So they'll give you like 14 grand if you put in 20 grand that you can trade with their money. So now you can trade with 34 grand. And, you know, they have, like, if your stocks end up at a certain price, then it'll auto-sell. That way they can protect themselves with their money, and they'll still get theirs back. And then they get, like, 5%, is it, on on what you... You pay a fee of 5% on whatever you use of theirs? Yeah, and then, but keep in mind, anybody uses this, you can negotiate your margin fee. So the lowest is 5%, but I told Robinhood, I'm like, dude, I'm not doing this. I need fucking... So I have 1.5% with Robinhood. Wait, you can negotiate margin. it? That's really good. That's really good. I do that shit, bro. Tell you, don't sleep. What you just like you message support? Like a, it's like, yeah, it's like a bank. It's like a you know you you fucking yeah. But you gotta have a good amount of money in there for sure to do that. I'm gonna tell my brother that because my brother probably doesn't know that. No way. No, he doesn't. Be like, get up customer support and be like, look, I'm moving all my money to TD Ameritrade, motherfucker. If you don't drop my margin rate, and they'll drop it. 2.5% and then 1.5% for me. I don't think they'll go lower than 1.5. At that point, I'm stealing money, dude. Like, what the yeah, fuck? Yeah, so, so, so basically, if you make good investments, everyone listening, like, that margin will fucking make you so much money. Because, like, you have, 
you probably have like two and a half mil in there plus the two mil margin like that shit is wild you're trading with way more money than you have so, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah but it's also a very quick way to fuck yourself if you don't do it correctly to that point during coronavirus i had a million in margin and every hour i was about to get called so i almost tapped my whole bank account out in coronavirus because if i didn't add more funds to the robin hood they would have sold all my positions or the positions that i use margin in so in the time of an economic Wait, crisis because your shit was getting funds, fucked hey, dude because coronavirus bro everything went to the fucking to the floor bro so like coronavirus every stock market drops what 25 30 percent so how'd you so get all my fucking so you, I added more funds to-, to That so way it never hits the lower caught. threshold. Exactly, so I'm just pumping more money into there, but if I didn't have money, bro, I would have I would have lost it all, dude. Lost but, it all. So, the, so the way it works is once you hit that threshold, they sell everything and you basically have zero? Yes, but they give you an opportunity to do what's called to avoid getting margin called. So I basically added more money before I got Oh, so they tell called. you, they notify you? Yeah, they'll be like, you're about to get called. Here's your little dot, 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 red line, motherfucker. You got, this is that red line of death, dude. And so unless you pump money and dude, like I'm talking like I'm losing like $150,000 a day for like three weeks straight. So I'm just going to pump the thing with fucking cash, bro. You're like, you're, I, yo, you're like, you're like, damn, bro. Why is this pulley system not working, man? Holy shit. I need fucking stronger hinges right now, bro. <laughs> bro. So are you, are you on Reddit at all? You like fuck with Reddit? Dude, I'm a fucking redditor, bro. I'm right in there with the trenches with you guys. My oh, man, that's so dope. That's so. Sick. I'm not, uh, dude. I've been through my Reddit time, man. <laughs> do you know? Do you know about the? the this motherfucker Google messaged me the other day. He goes, "Arab, look at this. Isn't that cool?" And I was like, I look at it. It's like a, it's like a Reddit like emoji yeah, that he made of himself. Yeah. A Reddit avatar, bro. He's like, I paid ten bucks for this shit. He's got like got his own. <laughs> he's got his own Reddit <laughs> avatar, and it's got like diamonds in its hands. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I paid good money for that shit. But uh, you know, it's funny. I fucking paid good money for that shit, and I posted on uh, Wall Street Bets like about how stoked I was about the little avatar, and a bunch of people just told me to fuck myself and why I didn't put the money that I paid for the avatar in GameStop. <laughs> <laughs> but but uh, dude, do you know about the do you know about the goo, dude on on Reddit on Wall Street Bets? I do. Yeah. The what, dude? There's this dude on Wall Street Bets. Uh, it's like a pretty famous story. They call him the G guy, and uh, so basically he he. We're, since we're talking about margins, why bring it up? The only person on Reddit that I know is Verified Son. I have don't you, know. Have you ever read that? Uh. Uh-uh. Do yourself a favor after this podcast, if you're listening, and go to Reddit.com/u/VerifiedSon, and you will go down a rabbit hole of reading a Reddit thread for 15 hours. <laughs> It doesn't end. Sure. It doesn't end. I spent a whole day, a whole few days in school reading that shit. Um, so, so, go, so, like, we're talking about margin, and the the guy on Reddit, he, uh, so he figured out a way to basically launder their own money, where like he he took his two thousand dollars, got margin on it, made it four thousand dollars, went to option, he he bought a bunch of calls. He then sold those calls for money and then he took the money and put it back into his account. So he made exact. So he had four thousand dollars, two thousand of which were margin. So not his money. He basically Uh, laundered it through their system, got the four thousand dollars back into his account and got margin on that four thousand dollars. Because now now Robin Hood's like, this isn't our money. So they gave him eight thousand dollars. He did it again and again and again until he got to fifty thousand dollars. Right. And then he fucking put it all in on a on a on a on an apple fd bro like on a fucking uh, a fucking hail mary basically and he recorded himself somehow reacting to apple crashing and his only reaction was Guh. and that's why he's famous <laughs> <laughs> wait uh, how, how did he fake robin were there systems that shit back then no 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 it's it's a it's a it's a valid it's valid but it's it's like something that they had to fig- it, the problem is that they they housed the two the two things together uh. so basically what he did was he bought call options uh, and then he sold them to robin hood as as um uh, i don't remember how he did it like he sold it to them like so if you sell a, a call to robin hood after you own it they can just give you money for it and but they can call it back whenever they want or something. okay and so basically what that did was that put that exact amount of money back in his account and he laundered it from them so he laundered the margin until he got to 50 grand Hmm. And then he took the 50 grand 
and did a fucking yellow fd on some fucking um on some uh apple shit and then he literally watched his account go from o- over fifty thousand dollars to like nothing wow. and like and now and now he's in like crazy debt like crazy margin <laughs> debt and, and and anyways that dude's, <laughs> that dude's a legend because he for some reason he got footage of himself going <laughs> i have a question uh so i have here you know a list of some of your achievements you met supreme patty one of the biggest instagram pages and you helped him start an e-commerce store can you walk us through that yep. you're the motherfucker yeah, that dude. sells the shrimp chains huh yeah, free chain swipe up. No way. <laughs> yeah, so, fucking shipping collector motherfucker, dude. Motherfucker, dude. And so that was like one of the big breaks for sure. And so, you know, it was really awesome. I met Patty around like three, four hundred thousand followers when he was first coming up and like he wasn't making any bread. So I was like, dude, I paid him for a post five hundred bucks, which was like a like a fucking steal at the time. And it made me 20 grand back. And I was like, what oh, was the post? shit. It was just, it was like selling free chains, but it wasn't Supreme Patty's free chains. It was my like gold company's free chains, right? right. So, because I like, I, I saw the free plus shipping model and I saw the jewelry space and I was like, okay, no one's doing this. And so it made me 20 grand back. And then I was like, look, I did it a couple more times, but I was like, hey, this kid's growing 15, 20,000 followers a day. Like, we obviously have a great thing here. Let me bring him in on the action. Let me tell him how much money he's re- really making and let's just partner 50 50 on a fucking store right which ended up being supreme patty.com and so we ended up doing that fucking six months later we're both millionaires that was really the store that made me like <laughs> i love rich. that bro i love that this motherfucker went yeah. from making no money uh, supreme went from making no money to getting taken in on a store with you and just within six months million dollars bro million dollars kids buying ap's fucking living his life bro kids are animal by the way but you know what was awesome about then so what is the deal that that you have by the way because i don't know what it is he said the shrimp chains what did you do before you oh yeah so we just basically basically go on the site it's just everything's free and it's just a bunch of fucking costume jewelry and like a bunch of like bling bling iced out shit yeah you just pay for shipping and i can't believe people on the shipping i can't believe people fucking fall for all those shits not only that, there's probably a million orders on that website. And so if I last, wow. last time I checked, just under a million orders. So we were crushing it. I mean, at the time, Supreme Patty, people underestimate, like, Patty was one of the top Instagrammers in the game for, like, six months. Like, no one was bigger. Like, the, sure, guys, right. the algorithm was hitting, you know? And at that moment in time, dude, we were just tra- – I lived with him for two years, so we were traveling around the world doing fucking pranks. You and live so with him and really you have great- no tattoos? Isn't he fucking tatted everywhere? Dude, no, but I have lawsuits, so if that fucking, <laughs> like, <laughs> there's no tattoos, but definitely a lot of lawsuits, bro. Fucking two lawsuits, two houses, fucking tens, hundreds of, 500,000 plus in fucking things that we paid. So we took it on the chin and now, you know, we're doing our things. Good for fucking you, bro. That's, that's so, sick. So basically what you're saying is we're going to start a store, you, me, and Arab, and in six months we're going to be millionaires? Is that what you're saying? Dude, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Free turtle beaches swipe up. <laughs> yeah, yeah nice. We'll get some strong. Listen, we got to give you some advice if you get into the gamer industry. Turtle beaches don't, don't fucking, they don't sell no more. They're not maybe the, the ones you see. No, maybe, the, maybe like the really like non-known like casuals, like non into the space. Yeah, but like you're into the space which i'm pretty sure what your next company is right it's a if you, i mean if you want to explain what your next plan is yeah so gamer gear is basically the next company that i'm launching it's going to be like my main focus and so gamer gear is going to be the one-stop shop for all of your gaming necessities so it's going to be like where you go to get your desktop your mic your your video games whatever it may be in the beginning it's going to be more clothing oriented just because it's low-hanging fruit i see there's a there's a there's a there's a gap in the gaming market for like really funny fucking clothes that like you would love especially so if i showed you the designs you'd fucking laugh your ass off and i think it's me that shit i'll fucking wear it baby uh dude i'm gonna send it to both of you guys and i think it's gonna be a really awesome vertical but gamer gear is gonna grow into something where it's gonna be basically the fucking amazon for gaming stuff right i'm also want to you know do deals with call of duty and a bunch of other like i have a lot of things in the works right now in terms of like how we're gonna build that thing but definitely any insight because i used to be a video gamer 12 hours a day growing up like from 6th to 10th grade like dude 
my mom fucking pulled me off the video games. You stupid bitch. You better get the fuck out of here. You know what I mean? Right. If she right. tried to fucking, you know, the fucking sticks from me, you know? But like, I'm. But nobody's taking out. my sticks. Hell no, baby. Nah, uh, dude. I'm going to war. We're fighting. You know what I mean? Right. My mom right. Wants- hey, you can't pause that shit. Mom, get the fuck out of my room. Totally. Multiple. I get it doesn't get it you know what i mean i was one of those like screaming like you were an older guy like my nuts didn't drop like you were like Who's yeah, this yeah, speaker? yeah. You know? yeah 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 all the shit and so like i'm a little out of tune but i'm getting more back into it figuring like this is the space that i'm going to be in dude right. all right all right you sold us we'll take a small minority share like <laughs> come on <laughs> we're used to being the minorities too anyways yeah uh, like come on we're used to like people of your shade taking more you, of the money anyways do you plan on your site to have your own gear that you're making or do you plan to resell things like logitech razor in the beginning it's going to be for the clothing side gamer gear is going to be all our designs Boy. all our designs all our clothes clothing is all in-house and i'm going to do merch as well for that's all going to be in-house the 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 products like the alien wares and like the actual mouses and keyboards before i eventually want to start manufacturing that stuff but in the beginning it's going to be like okay finding the highest integrity products on the market from like obviously opinions like people like yourselves and you know pushing that on the website and working out deals with them right but clothing in the beginning everything or clothing forever everything will be in-house but then obviously like products that i'm not here developing you know monitors at least not yet like that stuff will be filtered out from the best of the best and those will be catered on there as well right that's insane bro is that almost ready to launch yeah that's i don't know when this is going to launch but it'll probably be launched by the time this launches this will probably launch within like three weeks yeah this will be launched by then okay no way that's sick just enough time for us to get our minority share sick (laughs) um so obviously you were talking about how over COVID you made a shit ton of fucking money more than you'd expected by just actually pursuing the product rather than chasing the bag. Uh, yeah. COVID was good to a lot of people online. What was it that like boosted you? What companies were the ones that popped off because of, you know, the Black Plague? Yeah, so I was just, you know, in terms of the market wise, like I was huge tech, like I thought one thing that wouldn't get affected here was tech. So where everything dipped, tech dipped with it. I just fucking I was gonna get I was getting margin calls. So I was pumping money into my account and just buying these positions that, you know, I thought were, you know, not going to go down, right. So I was keeping the position. One thing that was interesting when obviously Tesla had its ramp before the COVID, but didn't have a real parabolic advance until after. I thought that, okay, if this is an airborne virus, that Tesla is the only car with like a hospital grade filtering system. So I was like, shit, this is an airborne disease. The only vehicle that can fucking, you know, fucking filter this shit out would probably be a Tesla. So I increased my Tesla position huge, right around 380, $400. I was already in deep around 200. Things like Upwork and Fiverr, where you're working from home, these freelance places fucking went parabolic and i just opened like huge positions in anything e-commerce and anything tech that i thought you know at the end of the day okay so look like i understand businesses like you know like brick and mortar businesses won't thrive but anything that's on the internet like facebook dipped crazy i bought so much facebook i was like dude everyone's gonna be on fucking facebook kind of just no brainer like anybody could have thought of i've been buying crypto every month for like the fucking last three years so obviously that attributed to it but also just like my work ethic like i kind of got into this situation where i was like okay i just started fucking grinding and pumping out these shopify stores dude so like with that i was just like boom 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 the trades were crushing the crypto was crushing and i just like felt like a new burst of energy in me and i was just like doing shopify store ppe fucking subscription boxes where it's like every month you got fucking 30 n95 masks a fucking gallon of fucking hand sanitizer shipped to your door damn that's a good idea whoa like bro like Dude, I, I I had a I had a stint in drop shipping too, where I had like a I had a, a partner like a friend who we tried making this store and it was like cosmetics because like apparently like female cosmetics are the ones that like really boom or like they have the most potential to like be like a a high yielding store or whatever. And yeah. uh, <clears throat> I think we just like it didn't. I don't think the product was good or maybe our marketing wasn't good. Something wasn't good. It didn't work out. But uh, but I had a. Uh, an experience in, in drop shipping that was interesting. So my question to you is when you do drop shipping, do you have it shipped out from the drop shipper or do you have like warehouses full of shit from like 
like because you know there's two ways to do it there's like owning the product and then there's like you know um just having it shipped out from the person that makes it so how, how do you run them usually yeah so obviously in the beginning like testing phases like i'm not somebody like until i know it works i'm not putting capital into it it's just not like i'm not a fucking like if i have the ability not to be capitally like involved in something if i don't need to i won't so but you know the unfortunate part about shipping from china to the customers obviously the experience the experience is poor 12 months ago, I didn't really care as much about the experience as I do now. Now for me, the experience comes first, everything else comes after. So I was fortunate enough that I was able to, you know, inventorize things in the States and move from there. But when I'm testing, like we call like the testing phase, like I'm always drop shipping from China. Like until I find out something's working and printing money, then I'm just going to drop ship it and just give the consumer a poor experience and then just apologize all the way until the product gets delivered. You know, once I find out it works, <laughs> Ball deep and just printing the thing, you know. So you've made it to this point. Do you have somebody that sets up your stores, or do you do it yourself? I mean, everything's automated. It's a full assembly line, store, product research. All I do is fucking. I like doing the, ads, the so idea, like, right? Yeah, I get like a boner when I fucking you know targeting people that you are make 34. a nice click funnel and then. Yeah, uh, that's where that's what gets me off. So like, I'll still do that because it's fun and I enjoy it. But all that minutia, hard work, shit, nah, dude. It's assembly line, churn and burn. So I have a really good, I have a really good concept for a dropship store that I just came up with right now. All right, dildos for right. old people. Thoughts? Oh, dude, I think that's a multi-trillion-dollar business. <laughs> the dude, fucking saying, serious like, face he put on, bro. Just to bro, say I'm that, dude. I'm telling you, look, man, old people, they you got, you know, they 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 need some loving too. A wrinkly dildo. Not, yeah. t- they can't, but they can't handle the, you know what I'm talking about? Like, they, they need something more chill. They need something that's more catered to them. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Maybe discreetly in their walker or something. I don't know. Dude, I think that's probably one of the best ideas since fucking Thomas Edison found fucking the light bulb and electricity. The reason, the reason, I, know, <laughs> the reason I know you're a, an excellent businessman is because I know you're lying to me, but I was like, oh my God, he gets it. <laughs> <laughs> um luke i gotta introduce you to my brother my brother runs a multi-million dollar marketing firm as well and he does all that shit uh, he's just starting to build a bunch of like e-commerce stores but um anyways yeah, you're arab am i white are you white boy what'd you say yeah so if you're arab I'm white boy yeah you can be white boy <laughs> normally it would just be white okay. uh, uh yo white yo whitey Caucasian. Yeah, no, I grew yo, up, Whitey, I, I grew up all the bend over. <laughs> that's the only way I imagine yo, Whitey. Yeah. I feel like that's some shit that happens in prison, bro. Like, imagine Luca in prison. Yeah. Yo, Whitey. Nah, bro, people would not fuck with him. He's like 6'7", dude. He's got reach on all of them. <laughs> uh, yeah. So so you mentioned work ethic earlier. Um, yeah. You said, you know, you, you started working your ass off. You know, you had to go into, like, full performance mode. Uh, I have this, like, I, I believe that work ethic, like, outweighs everything. Um, something about me, something about me is I worked my ass off harder than almost any streamer, bro. Like, any streamer, anybody in the scene the past two years. I was going to full-time school, right? Like, still doing five, four to five classes in computer engineering while commuting, while still streaming 300 hours a month and doing YouTube videos and shit like that. Like, it was nonstop, like, 18 hours a day. Um, even a little bit more sometimes, like five to six hours of sleep. And, and I think that's a big reason like why I got to where I am is because of that. I, I think people don't realize the, the impact of work ethic. Like they think that any, all this online shit is like, oh, he's making money online, like it's easy. But really like most of us are putting in, the successful people are putting in more, way more hours than you can even like fathom. Like in two days, you're putting in as many hours as they're putting in the whole week. Like, what's your and, take and on I, that? Yeah, I love that you bring it up because I completely agree. Like, for me, I'm an avid believer that, you know, to become a millionaire, you don't need, like, I think I think success is not IQ, but all, like, work ethic and EQ, right? So, like, your emotional quotient, how you can maneuver through people and, like, how hard you work towards things. Obviously, there's those exceptions where just IQ, some people are just, like, brainiacs and, like, Vitalik, you know what I mean? Right. Ethereum, you know, these types. They're just like so fucking smart that they're just going to print money. But I'm an avid believer that anybody can become a millionaire just off their work ethic. Like I kind of look at like success financially and school is 
feels the same. Like anybody who goes to school and is getting like straight A's, like I don't look at that kid with straight A's as any smarter as that kid with straight F's. I just look at that kid with straight A's that he worked harder than the kid with straight F's. It's all it is, right? And so I look at the millionaire and the person who's not a millionaire is the same thing. Like I look at him, like he just focused on his craft more than the person who didn't. Now, could I argue that, you know, becoming a billionaire might be a little bit different? Maybe a little bit, but I mean, a lot of it. Getting a billionaire is wild. I think it's a little bit different, but I think anybody can get a hundred million dollars just off of work ethic. I really believe that. I mean, like you said, you said earlier is that, and this is the thing that a lot of people don't realize as well is like, you can't just make your first like million dollars and then donate it and then have the biggest impact. Like, like what you said is to get into those circles to have people who can change the world and, and do something good. You need to have a status of, of I've made this much money. Like I, like let's work together. My EQ, my IQ is there. Okay. So like for you to do right. these things that you want to do, you know, build schools in Africa, or you have to get to that point where you have people that can actually make big movements, right? Like, Bill Gates, if he gave away his first million dollars, he wouldn't be donating as much money as he is today. It would be in the hands of somebody else. And people don't realize that. People are so quick to be like, oh my God, like, fuck capitalism, like, uh, these billionaires. And don't get me wrong, there are people who, like, don't do anything good with it. And it's like, what are you, what are you possibly doing with fucking $50 billion? Like, how many yachts, you know, do you need? But, but like, the, the people got to realize that to get to that if you want to have the biggest impact you have to get to that point first and then look back so. and in that same breath it's interesting that you say that because my ex-girlfriend is like you say you want to change the world but you're buying cars and and like i'm like talking to myself i'm like look first i need to take care of myself first and two some of the things that i buy you have to understand their strategic like placements in terms of like you'd be so surprised like i was somebody who i'll give you this this is a really interesting story but like this is very applicable right like Back in, in Supreme Patty's heyday, we were over at like uh, the Kardashians' house, right? And like they didn't know, pay attention to me because I was like some bummy skater kid. Like I had a lot of money, but I didn't care about my clothes or anything like that, right? We come back, I get really insecure because like literally they treat me like a fucking like dirt, like shit on the bottom of a shoe. So I'm like, fuck this. I spend like 10 grand the next fucking day at like Gucci and all this shit. And I don't condone that because that's really like worthless. But then the next, the next week I go to their house and now I'm like, like I'm the center of attention. Like, who are you? What do you do? You know what I mean? And these are like tools that you need to necessarily to get into the right rooms and to do certain things in life. And so like, I'm, I completely agree. Like there's certain things I need to take care of in my personal life first that I need to like learn and indulge in. But the end goal is always going to be that, right? Like I don't plan on working. Like once I, like to me, like once I'm 30, like my life will be about impact. Right now though, I need to get to that point to where I can make an impact and certain things like a nice car will get me in the in, a, in a, the right room to meet somebody that will help me get to my end goal, right? Like it's all like stepping blocks and stepping stools to like an end destination. Something key that you did that nobody, no other guest has done. Um, and my brother taught me this a while ago. My brother used to be in like Vima Verve, like the network marketing shit. And that was a big start of like how he got his sales selling skills. Um, but like he used to tell me like everybody you meet get their number and something key that you did is like normally we go through discord with everybody we do and i need to start giving them my number more because i messaged you and the first thing you did is you sent your number back like after i said let's do it you sent your number and you said text me yeah and like nobody does that and it's so important because it's like just expanding your connections knowing people that eventually one day you might do business with like people don't realize building that contact list is so important and I, exactly as soon as you sent that. that i was like dude this kid like he's exactly yeah. what we've been told about him you know like and now when i want you on gamer gear i'm gonna fucking call your ass exactly off and your phone off and there's no exactly and because like i got an iphone away. now you just facetime me so, over, so, dude. so, so I, have a, I have a similar note to where like I'm going to address the, the people listening right now because we, we've talked about how you have to get to a certain point of presentation and of like perceived success to make your way into these inner circles because realistically no one owes you anything in life, right? Like no one, like dude, like you know, you get, get, you get gate kept all the time by people but like you have to like, you know, get around it, etc. But my, my point with this is that people always talk about how bigger streamers won't play with or acknowledge smaller streamers 
And, right. and the thing is, it's because those bigger streamers did the work to get there. And to get their attention, right. to get their respect, and to become one of their peers, they have to see the same, you know, the same work, right? So, like, you know, if somebody hosts me with five viewers, I'm going to thank them. I'm going to be, you know, stoked that they, that they, you know, host me, whatever. But that's different than if someone hosts me with, like, the same amount of viewers that I get. You know what I'm saying? Like, because I'm like, okay, shit, we're like, we're similar. Right. We're right. like, we're like peers. We're on the same level. And not only that, but you're trusting me with your audience. Man, a big and thing. That, yeah, go ahead. And that's, yeah, and I was just going to say that, that, like, a lot of people, man, they, 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 they say streamers have egos. They say, like, you know, they don't fuck with, like, the, the little guy, this and that. But it's not that, man, because we were all there. We all started at bro, fucking zero. It's, bro, and know? here's the thing. Um, like, I never actually put it into that perspective. Like, but now that you say that, it makes me really think about it. Like, there's people that I used to play with that get five viewers, and they still do. You know, I used to play with them when I had five viewers. Um, but the thing is, I worked 16 hours a day and I would stream fucking 12 hours a day and upload to YouTube and they didn't, they would stream for two hours and they wouldn't do anything on all the other socials, you know, they'd get off, they dilly dally with no goals. And, and it's like, like you said, like there's a level of respect for hard work. And, and when I like, you know, when you see that, it's not like an ego thing. It's just like, a like we didn't put in the same amount of work. Like I want somebody who is putting in that work to like to be friends with i want people to push me so like i'm not gonna go out of my way to be friends with you i don't know right and with the streamer and the influencer space i've derived and you guys would totally agree with this but like every big influencer and streamer that i've met it's just quality consistent content but the consistent part is the most important part like you can sit on a fucking stream and do whatever but it's just like it's the fact that you're sitting on the stream and doing whatever which is the important part like you just as long as you stay consistent and provide obviously some sort of quality content it's like the youtubers that thrive are the ones that are constantly posting constantly posting Streamers that thrive are the ones that are constantly streaming. You want you want to be a streamer? You want to be a YouTuber? Where's your daily video? Where's your 12-hour stream every, right. every day of every week? You want it. You go get it. Everybody likes to pussyfoot and half-ass shit and like, oh, a little bit of this, a little bit of that. No. You have a passion. You love something. Do it. Hone in on it and give it a hundred and million fucking percent until you can't fucking dude. do it. Oh, right. bro. I fuck yeah, with that, bro. Hard as fuck, dude. You, you, you have to commit. And and I was telling Arab the other day, I was thinking to myself, I don't know why, you know, sometimes you just fucking, you know, you, you stare off into the fucking moon and you talk, you know, you think about life. And I was thinking, about, I was thinking to myself, I was like, if, if, if a hundred million dollars spawned in my bank account right now, what would I do? Right. And I thought to myself, and genuinely, the most genuine answer I could come up with was, I would just do what I'm doing, but way better with way more, you know, yeah. resources or whatever. And and I was telling him about like I couldn't imagine a life where I'm not making, creating something, posting something. Like it's just like it's what we enjoy. I, it's the making yeah. content for people, no, making them dude, laugh like, and if shit. I made, if I made an unlimited amount of money, I wouldn't stop doing this. I'd be so fucking bored. Right. You know what I'm saying? Don't get me wrong. You can up your production value and shit. Exactly. And like, exactly. Exactly. Maybe exactly. Just you do you, you do personally could get like some plastic surgery, look a little bit better. But like <laughs> things like that, that would why would you help say that to a guest? <laughs> it's fucked up he took the time to be arab you need it we need, we need to have a talk after this you need to treat him better bro it's um, fucked up. but no i i totally agree like if I, like if i had that it would be but you just got to do it yet yeah, anyways i don't know how you got to the happiness part of it um no are you depressed? Mean, just, who me yeah oh my god i'm your friend of course <laughs> holy shit you suck luca um i actually got a you know like i mentioned so how did you get the name beverly hills bandit Amongst the, yeah. uh... <laughs> I love that you found that because I don't know. So I've been wreaking havoc on the city of Beverly Hills since 2018. Me and the Beverly Hills Police Department have a huge feud going on for the last three years. We hate each other. And so for me, I just feel like I'm the bandit. I'm like the leader of the Beverly Hills militia. And so for me, it's just like, that's, that's who I am. It's like my moniker. Like you are like a rab, like I'm the Beverly Hills bandit, you know? Right. So, Is that like, your rap name? I, that's dude. When I drop my album, it will be the Beverly Hills. So bandit. what do you mean wreaking havoc? What have you been doing? Dude, I'm like, just like anything. Like when I'm, when, like, have you got, I'm, have you done some shit that you're like, I, wow, dude, dude, you want to hear something crazy? Yes, dude, yes. I do. I, I'm going, I'm going down Santa Monica right in beverly hills speed limits 35 you ready for this 
I, I know exactly where this story is going because I have this on the list too, bro. <laughs> I'm going 37. And we're, you get pulled over? No, 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 no. Check this out. It's 35. 37. No, 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 no. It's 35 miles an hour. I'm going 37. Oh, oh, just... oh, 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 I'm going 37 and a 35, bro. So I'm you... the bitch. So you just do that shit, just fucking small nah, shit. I don't know. I'm fucking. See, come on. You're in bro. the you're, you're in the marshmallow mask. Put the sarcastic jokes on you, bro. You don't fucking listen. Laugh, I don't fucking damn, know. I don't know. Damn. Y'all should um, wait. Listen, I got a oh, I got shit. a list here on the story. I thought you were about to get into the marshmallow story. I got a list here that says you went speeding and pretended to be marshmallow. I got to hear that story too, bro. <laughs> that one. So, but no. In retrospect, I was just joking about the thirty-seven. And okay, 35. right, right, right. Beverly Hills, bro, I'm don't like, bro, I'm a, I'm a fucking, so I used to live in the city of Beverly Hills. They used to fucking like, they were like, you, you're not supposed to be living here. This house is too expensive. They were like, thought I was a fucking crackhead drug dealer, like whole nine doing Because you're not wearing and, a suit and fucking, you know, running yeah. up Wall Street, right? Like from me and the Beverly Hills Police Department hate each other. Graffiti when I was like, like whole nine, bro. We've wreaked havoc fucking. BHB, out. was that your fucking uh, graffiti name? That was my that wasn't my graffiti name, bro. But we were just wreaking havoc, bro. I just like so, sometimes like I feel like a uh, bane sometimes. Like I just like wreaking chaos, you know, right. like fucking making the city burn. Like some people just like to see the city burn, bro. At one point in my life, I was I was like the Joker, bro. I just wanted to see it all burn. These fucking Why? rich stuff. Assholes. Because you came from nothing. Yeah, and it's just like it's something about like, dude, I was a bad kid, so I wanted that thrill, bro. So it's like, dude, I just want to mm. see you. Rip fuckers burn but like that was the immature side of me the right. marshmallow story hilarious right so i'm at coachella right right my fucking best friend peter's like yo bro we gotta get to fucking la because i got a i got a green bmw so we call it the green goblin so he's like bro we gotta get the green goblin we gotta go from coachella to la in one hour so i'm like that i'm slamming it bro so i hit the freeway i'm going like 130 140 easy right and then I start picking it up a notch. I'm like, okay, dude, let's see how long let's see how long we can go 150, 160 at. So we're cruising like at 140, 150 now. And I pass a cop car and I'm like, fuck. And I just keep going. I don't see any lights. And I'm like, okay, bet, we're good. So I'm flying for 45 minutes down the freeway. Motherfucker and- didn't see any lights, bro. They're gonna call helicopters on you. They would have heard your ass going past them. Exactly, bro. So then I see lights behind me. I'm like, fuck, I pull over to the side. The cops go over, they're like, look, dude, we've been chasing you for the last 30 minutes. Like, we went in the side lane, we turned our lights off because we knew if you saw your lights, you would fucking keep going. But, like, this is the fastest we've ever gotten somebody. Like, you're going to jail. I get, I, I, I tell the officer, I'm look, they're like, why in the hell are you going so fast? I'm like, look, officer, like, I'm not supposed to tell people, but I'm Marshmallow, the DJ, and I just finished my set at Coachella, and now I have a set at Nightingale in the club, and I'm trying to make my set in time. Please hope you understand if, you, if your kids like know who I am, like any autographs or anything I'd be willing to do. He drive, he does the DUI test, make sure I'm not drunk. He's like, go make your show, kid. And I'm like, I got you, champ. I'm oh, my gone. God. You're a piece of <laughs> shit. <laughs> take it, nothing. And he clocked me going 140, bro. That's a, that's a felony, bro. You take, you take my license away. You throw me in the slammer. And I, you might even actually do time for that. I don't know specifically. But 140 is like no joke. You kill people at 140. Like yeah. you're killing a lot at 140 and it holy was holy fuck you abused that yeah. if you double the speed limit you go to jail yeah yeah and that's Very such immature. a nice cop holy shit dude you can't rest marshmallow he's been on the front page news bro he knew better well just, just even so like a cop just understanding that you got to get to fucking get to that's show. wild bro you don't have like you're a like, mask th- or anything you like, just thanks officer and then you just fucking burn out no, but you know, because like I, my, my BMW is a little baller, you know, I got a little M5 comp with the fucking green and the rims, you know what I mean? So yeah, like yeah. I'm a young, young face. I'm right. like, dude, like I'm a marshmallow, bro. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Bro, that's wild. And I'll use it every time. I'm, I'm done going fast because that, that was like very immature moment in my life, but it got me out of something huge. So Right. Dude, you've had a fucking insane past. Uh, I. You, you built a few successful stores like Cookies and Kicks, Von Dutch, and Unhappy Clothing. What, uh, which, which store are you most proud of? Like, not out of those three, but just out of all your achievements. The, 
I mean, in terms of those three, like for me, the the Von Dutch situation. Not even those three. Was... Just like in general. What's your most proud achievement? Like you built a store and you're like, yes, we fucking did it. Like I had this I had this turtleneck brand that I just took regular fucking turtlenecks, bro, and I made like seven, eight million dollars gross on these fucking turtlenecks, and I was gonna turn it into the fucking turtleneck center of the world, and then I got fucked so bad by like my processing company so fucking bad and it just like killed all my motivation for it I had like a million dollars locked in there for fucking eight months it was just a disaster and so it just kind of killed all my momentum right. but definitely my turtleneck store but in reality maybe what we did with von dutch was probably like the most impressive because of like how quickly and how parabolic that went and like everybody knows it and knows me for that so i'm pretty proud of what we did there can you explain I came what you did there yeah, so Von Dutch has been around for like 30 years, right? Like Von Dutch has been a brand, right? But it's like died like to the fucking bottom of the abyss. And I didn't really know that. But when we basically came onto there, they were like 12th in the West. So we'll use like basketball as an analogy. Like these guys were fucking 12th in the West, like stinking up like the Bobcats, bro. Like these guys stunk. You know what I mean? And I came in there and worked out a really fucking great deal. Like, I have no idea what you mean, but I, I think I understand by context. <laughs> <this>. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I don't know if you know Call of Duty, but it'd be like fucking like, or let me give you like a gamer example. It'd be like the fucking, the guy at the bottom of the fucking scoreboard, like the stinker, bro. Right. right. Yeah, he's, of, he's bottom. bottom. Oh, oh, like 12th yeah, in the West. Right. Yeah, like who's the, who's oh, the worst Oh, you could have said that. Like, yeah, like a 12th in the West. Okay, yeah, yeah. 12th in the West, exactly. So the fucking, or, or you can throw shade on a gamer if you want right now. Just give me an analogy to use. Like, who's uh, the worst I won't. Gamer? Nah, everyone, everyone knows who already oh, has The worst gamer we know, uh, his name's DP Chu. Okay, so like these guys were DP fucking Chu. Bro. No oh way. God, no fucking way. I came in and I super fucking packed that business and I fucking took it from DP fucking Chu to fucking Ninja, bro, in like 12 months, bro. So you went from DP stinking Chu, bro, to fucking Ninja in 12 months. <laughs> the amount of times you said the name. <laughs> oh, dude, dude you know we're going to die laughing about this later. <laughs> yeah. So that that one was how because like, like through through your through ads and shit obviously but how much were you spending on monthly uh ad rate like ads to get to that point dude so it, it was a formula right so for me it was really like getting it on famous people first and driving the hype up so I one thing I really do have a good Rolodex of is just fucking famous people in my like who I just send shit to you have the whole so Pokédex cop. The whole Pokédex, bro, and I fucking sent it to Charizard. I sent it to fucking Mewtwo. I sent it to the big motherfuckers, <laughs> the legendary guys. Fucked with it, started rocking it, and then boom! I just turned on the ad machine, and dude, we're just spending bread and just printing fifteen, twenty, thirty x what we're spending, bro. Just whew, unbelievable. Fucking beautiful, dude. I, I fuck with that. I fuck with that. Yeah. H how do you, how do you pick your targets? What do you mean? Like, who do how, I target? How did you pick Von Dutch? Like, how, like, why were you like, let me, let me, like, fuck, the, like, let me fuck shit up with them? It came to me. My boy Ben walked into their store one day and was like, yo, you guys must be crushing. They're like, they're like, no, we're the 12th, or they said, nah, we're the 12th seed in the West. We're fucking DP fucking Chew. And we're tired of being <laughs> DP fucking Chew. And Ben was like, dude. I know who your fucking Le I know who your ninja could be. I know who your LeBron could be. And so we fucking dynamic duo that whole situation and just fucking came in and turned that fucker in a ninja. Like how you would do to these scrubs on Fortnite. Or right. Damn, dude, this man is a man, I like it. DP fucking chew, dude. That sucks. Not an amateur. <laughs> dude, that's awesome. That's you know what's so funny. I I, uh, I actually have owned a few Von Dutch items in my life and I remember the most Notable one was when I was in like middle school. I owned a Von Dutch like satchel and I fucking it was like my backpack to school and it was so dope. I liked it a lot. I haven't. Your ads suck. Yeah, dude. <laughs> <laughs> no, I actually I actually just like you said, like you walked in the Kardashians and you were wearing nothing and then you started like, you know, wearing Gucci. I don't think I'll ever wear Gucci just because I fucking hate that brand. Um but but yeah, like Edwin like Edwin just started getting me into like fashion and he's been pimping me out. Like he's I'm his little whore. But you know uh, now that I love it. Yeah. If you want to have like a good impression, just get a watch or like a Well, new, that's like, that you know I, mean? I like always understood. Cloak. So so like my dad, he's very old fashioned. I told you that before the podcast. Like he's very uh you know, he's he, he's done some good stuff in his life and he told me like the first thing that 
businessmen at, at like that level do is they'll look at your watch, they'll look at your belt, and they'll look at your shoes. And I like believe the watch, the shoes and belt, maybe like the older generation does that. But um, like the watch is definitely super important. Yeah. So. And it appreciates like the coronavirus. I have a huge watch collection, dude. I fucking maybe doubled like every. I probably spent maybe a quarter million dollars on watches. It's probably half a million dollars a day. Are they cheaper the during the? Are they cheaper during Corona? No. All the watches stopped producing them. All, all oh, the and they went up. Down, and so they went up. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna so rob you. Invest probably. I got a machine gun pulled in my fucking face, so it's already been Damn, done. That. That's crazy. My cousin already got to you. Fuck. Damn. <laughs> it's payback for your people taking Edwin's uh, yeah, reservations. Yeah, my land, bro. My yeah. fucking land, dude. All we got was casinos, and only get like a fucking little bit of that. Like, come on, it's fucked up. <laughs> Luca, um, I, I, I want to ask you a question that we ask every guest on the podcast, you know, as it nears the end. Um, it, it's, a, it's a hard question to answer. So I just like, you've been through a lot of hardships in your life. I just want you to know that <laughs> this right here might be the thing that sends you over the edge and there won't be a miracle for this one. Um, one day surgeries are going to get so good, Luca, right? where and by the way the podcast didn't come to the end it's just towards the end and i you know decided to come up with this um one day surgeries are gonna get so good that you won't be able to tell the difference between a male a female transgender so like somebody who was born a male and is now a female versus like like you won't be able to know that they're transgender right so like they were just born female look right? how excited this little weirdo got look at him. um Dude, or like so a excited. female that was born a female and then is now a male. So like, let's say, who's like the most beautiful woman you know? That you can think of. You don't have to know them personally. Yeah, yeah. He's like, let me check my roller deck. That I can. Uh, I would probably say one of the most beautiful girls around right now would probably be somebody like. Uh... Like damn shit, I don't know. Like, like a okay, celebrity crush. Seeing... Say Nicki Minaj. That's what you pick. <laughs> yeah, motherfucker my beat his dick. <laughs> motherfucker beat his dick to one of her songs, and he was like, "All right." No, she got fat. Right, Nicki Minaj had a huge crush on Nicki for the longest. Okay, she, prob- would, she would beat your shit in, dog. Yeah. <laughs> he's six <laughs> six, bro. Remember? Yeah, true. He is tall. Never yeah. Mind. Okay, true. and then who's like the most beautiful? Like, like who's like the best looking guy? You know, like people go like Chris Evans or uh, Chris Hemsworth. You know, like. Yeah, let's say Chris Hemsworth. Okay, so like Nicki Minaj, everything about her is the same. Everything. The exact same voice, boobs, ass, but she's got a penis. Everything is the same, but she's got a penis. Chris Hemsworth, everything is the same. Voice, abs, whatever. He's got a vagina. You're going to die. You have to go down on one to save yourself. This is the brand question we ask this to every single guest. I have to go down. I have to go down. Yes, on them? you're not. Yeah, like, yeah, my mouth? yeah, you're not fucking yeah. any. You gotta go down. Uh, I, have to go, I have to go, Chris Hemsworth. I'm not gonna put my mouth on him. A... Really? You're going down, on Chris Hemsworth, bro? <laughs> nah, dude, you because Chris Hemsworth has the vagina, so it's just an ugly. Girl get rid of your point. ego, bro. Get rid of your. Uh, get rid of your fucking. I'm gay <laughs> ego. Yeah. Listen, no way. You live in LA, bro. No one's gonna look at you and go, "Damn, this dog gay." Like, bro. Nicki bro, Minaj, you, everything is the you, same. Arguably, arguably, Nicki Minaj with a penis is an upgrade in some service. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Dude, you're going down on Chris Hemsworth. He's going to be looking at you and he's going to be like, oh, yeah, bro. Yeah, keep that shit up. He's, he's, he's going to be real. He's going to be real beefy. He's going to have like big ass thighs around your little head. You know what I'm saying? Like you look up, you're staring at Chris Hemsworth's fucking eight pack. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. Really? Like you'd rather do that than hold same. Nikki's yeah. pair, hold a pair of Nikki's titties and go down on the penis. Like you got to think about that, right? Dude, I'm going where the vagina is. So wherever the vagina is at is where <laughs> So I don't Fair care. play. Are you from New York? I'm the frog or a turtle or a. Are you from New York? Else. Yeah. Where are you from? I'm from. We bounced around everywhere, but I I've been in. I've lived in New York for a couple of years. Makes sense. It makes sense. <laughs> so we've had. Bro, I'm telling you, we've had like li- seven out of nine guests pick the vagina, and we've had forty guests, and six of those seven, or I mean, we know seven out of nine guests that picked the vagina were from New York. 
I mean, w- wait, so like you're saying like the other 30 guests pick the wiener in their mouth? Oh my God, yeah. You, got, you can't say like that. They decided to go down on Margot Robbie. Yeah, on Nicki Minaj. Yeah. Bro. I let Mickey not. Just Nicki remember, Minaj like you might, you might, you might, you might not have to ever admit that you've sucked a dick, but you're gonna have to say that you went down on Chris Hemsworth. So you live yeah, with whatever yeah, you yeah, got, yeah. bro. Exactly, exactly. See, now if I tell my friends I fucked Nicki Minaj, no, I went down on Nicki Minaj. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I damn, mean, shit, bro. If it's Nicki Minaj, bro, like I'm, I'm fucking hoping she sticks around after. About my lawyer, I wish I could call my lawyer and just see what he would think of this. I like wonder if that's a good question or not. <laughs> <laughs> You're gonna ask him for legal advice? <laughs> He's I, like, Am I on the clock for this? <laughs> Motherfucker's I, gotta pay his lawyer a grand just to ask him this question. Yo, uh, Luca, I have another question. Um, yeah. uh, a little like last question before we uh, wrap it up. Obviously, well, first of all, before we wrap it up and I ask this question, um, uh, where can people find you for the next, you know? few months what are your plans obviously you talked about the gamer gear um and that'll be sponsoring the podcast eventually but like where can people find you what are your plans etc luca nets on instagram l-u-c-a-n-e-t-z uh same with twitter luca nets uh i'm going to be on there just doing my regular thing and over the next couple months it's going to be gamer gear and i also have a SaaS. A platform called Social Snowball, which turns uh, every customer into an affiliate for all Shopify stores. So those are my main two focuses. It's going to be Gamer Gear, Social Snowball, and I'm really enjoying the 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 trading chat. So like I'm having a really good time doing that, making like like it feels good to make somebody money and to like teach them about the markets. And so like I did, I kind of was. W- I'm kind of getting passionate there. So those will probably be the three things that I'm working on. Okay, so you you. You aren't big on social media, so by the way, when you guys look him up on fucking Twitter, like, and you see 2,000 followers, that's him. Um, why do you not, like, do you not care about the social media? And also, I just pulled up your Instagram, you know, obviously it's a little bit bigger, but you look like way more of a douchebag on your Instagram than you are here. Um, just have to point that out. <laughs> yeah, that's all. Why do you, why do you say that? Because I just look like a fucking little shit. You just look like a fuck boy, dude. <laughs> no, I just, I just don't, I don't, look. Like, but I'm on your Instagram right now. I just followed you on both. And I, uh, oh, I know, you know, you know, a dude I know, Sean, Sean, Mike Kelly. Yeah, that's my dog. Really? I fucking talked to him recently and he actually connected me to another SEO homie named Brandon. Um, yeah, which you might know, but anyways, um, yeah, no, you just look like you wouldn't have such a, an impressive vocabulary by these pictures. You know what I'm saying? You have some good streetwear, you know, outfits, et cetera. I, oh, are these, are these some Ray gun SBs I see? My man. Oh wait, no, these are. These are these are the um listen the, off-white, the reason whatever. I said anyway. that the reason I said that is because every picture you're like with like a hat. No, and, yeah, yeah. You're just you're just wearing some hype shit. Yeah, you know it's, it's it's shit that grows your Instagram, but I'm just saying, like, if I looked at that, I wouldn't think that you were like this down to earth and chill. So Oh my man's got the, the but, fucking grateful deads on. My but man. I wanna go back to that point that you don't so you don't do you not care to have a big social media following? Like why is that? Why are you so behind the scenes so in the beginning i didn't, I didn't right because everybody every rich person told me you don't want to be found you don't want to be this you don't want to be that so i always thought that like, rich people had to be in the background and like that was like our thing like where we don't want to be flagged by the irs and like we're scared and then i realized like i don't want to be those rich people like those people who just make money in the shadows like that's not who i want to be i want to have an impact so as of recently the last six months i've started to care a little bit more about it and i've tried to make it a focus and that's why like interviews and podcast things that i wasn't doing before is something that i'm actually doing now because like I want people to know that like my, what my message is. And I think that my message is a good one and I think it's going to be impactful and with impact comes this legacy. And so right now it's like something that I am focusing on at least more than I was before. The reason why it's just kind of gaining momentum is because like, again, I wanted to be in the shadows per what I was told was the right thing to do once you started making money. But like, I don't want to be those rich guys who just sit on a boat and just like count their money like i want to make other people money i want to inspire other people through their mental health battles i want to help them take it to the right. next level and so that's why like now i'm shifting there and, and that's like my new thing so all seven of you listening make sure to go follow him on twitter or instagram <laughs> okay you, you, you got some nice shoes man i will 100 percent be robbing you holy shit my man <laughs> or what do you want me to do oh oh I'll rob that too. I don't know. 
Um, <laughs> you yeah, you guys. Me- yeah, yeah, you guys will get along. Like with, you guys will get along yeah, with shoes. Yeah, we're gonna be, we're gonna be homies, uh, bro. That's cool. Listen, if you guys made it to the end of the podcast, make sure to check out uh, Lucas' stuff. I mean, you guys will be seeing it in all the other podcasts anyway at the beginning of the videos. Um, but remember, guys, we are on Spotify, Apple, everywhere. Fucking uh, YouTube. You click the. We have a clips channel where Edwin's pointing right there. And you can check out the highlights of every podcast. They'll come out about like a week later where we put up the highlights, the, the best parts of the podcast. If you guys don't like listening to the full ones, we take some, uh, some, some key highlights and, and upload them there because you guys have attention spans of fucking baby squirrels. I uh, think we're making it to the end. See you guys later. Peace.